Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 PC Beta is finally here, and as I promised last week, so is my PC settings video. Now, before we get started, I know a lot of you probably like, this isn't 30 minutes like the last one, and that's because I'm not going to waste my breath going over a lot of the uh, basic settings I went over. So if you want to see some of the basic settings, sure, it's a little more console lenient, but if you have a question about something like aim assist or whatnot, I go over it in that video. It's half an hour long. If you have a question, answer's probably in there. As for graphic settings on PC so that you can be the most ultimate G Fuel epic gamer ever, this is going to be that video, which is hopefully going to be quite a bit shorter. So without further ado, remember if you enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a nice, a thick and juicy like. Don't forget to just wiggly swash. I don't know what I'm saying. Just hit that, hit that subscribe button, please. I'm, I'm struggling over here with the algorithm right now. So do your boy a favor. Also got to thank my channel members. You guys are awesome. You help make these videos possible. If you want to join, check out that blue join button. Anyway, let's talk about PC graphics in Modern Warfare 2 because, you know, by golly, this game is gorgeous. But let's take a look at this display mode. I have it on full screen borderless. That is because I am on, well, I'm using OBS right now and, and some other things so that I can record this video. So it is on full screen borderless, but if you want the absolute best performance, put it on just full screen. That'll give it focus and all that. It just, it works. Trust me, it'll give you all of the power straight to just playing the game. You're not going to worry about, oh, I slid my, my thing off the screen and now I'm on the other monitor. I have to worry about it, just full screen. Uh, also, just want to quickly say over here in the, in the corner, don't panic. This is because I'm running like 10 other apps in the background. So unless you're a content creator with limited RAM, like your boy, don't worry about this. Typically, I wouldn't be running OBS. I would do NVIDIA Shadow Play, but this is what we got to do for now. Constrain mouse to game window. This really only applies if you play in windowed mode. I wouldn't recommend playing in windowed mode unless you really want to, and that would just keep it inside the game window. Display monitor, pick whichever monitor you want to use. I have LG Ultra Gear. That's what I use for my main monitor, so that's the one I select. I do have a second one, but it's blank right now. I don't know why that is. You can see the resolution thing change down here, but this is the one I play on, so that's the one I select. Now, for display adapter, you're gonna want to make sure you select your main GPU. Do not do something like select uh, your CPU, which mine does have a graphics ability to it, don't do that unless you want serious performance hits because this game can be quite intensive on your PC. So don't do that. Make sure you click on your main GPU. For most of you, it is only going to show your main GPU. So you probably don't have to worry about this. But in case it shows up with two, make sure you know if it's NVIDIA or AMD or something like that. Click on that. Screen refresh rate, mine automatically 144, but you could select a different one if that's what you wanted to do. I would say select the highest possible one that you can because that's just gonna be the best thing to do in a game like this. Display resolution, you can change your resolution. So here, I gotta switch it to basically full screen for this. Um, so you can come in here, you can change it. If you wanna upscale it, you can. If you wanna downscale your resolution, say you wanna play at 1080p, you can do that. This affects the resolution that the game is displayed at. There will be another resolution option later in the settings I'll go over, but this will be like what your monitor is going to show in. Dynamic resolution, don't worry about it, just turn it off. If you're playing above 100 frames a second, don't even worry about dynamic resolution, not worth even thinking about. Aspect ratio, automatic. Most of you are gonna have a 16 by nine monitor that is standard for most every display you can think of. It's the most common one. If you do have an ultra wide or just a wide monitor, maybe a monitor that's a little bit longer, you can go in here and can select the different ones, but a majority of you out there are going to have a 16 by nine. If you don't, or you don't think you do, just check your PC settings. V-Sync for gameplay and for the menus, just go ahead and turn that off. Unless you're playing down around 60 FPS, that's just all your computer can handle, and you think you need a little bit of that V-Sync to smooth out some screen tearing, you can, but again, playing at such high frame rates, if you're above 100, you're probably fine with V-Sync turned off, so I wouldn't worry about it. Custom frame rate limit, this is great. Crank up the gameplay one, put it as high as you can get it. It's 300 as high as it goes. None of you are special, don't worry. You're all stuck at 300 just like me. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna automatically get 300 FPS unless you have a God tier PC. Uh, that would be quite impressive and I would like you to donate it to me. Thank you. 
Uh, custom frame rate limit for the menu. I put this only at about 100 because I don't want my computer trying way too hard like FaZe Clan 420 does in every single match that he's reverse boosting. I don't want my computer being like that guy. I want it to relax when we're in the menus. I want it to take a chill pill and calm down, okay? That other stuff is for gameplay. Calm down. Now, out of focus thing, most of you are not gonna have to worry about it, but if you do often alt tab out of the game or you play in the full screen, uh, borderless, something like that, content creator, whatever it may be, if you're gonna be out of focus of the game and doing other things on a separate monitor, or just on a separate tab, you can change it to where when it's out of focus, the game is only going up to 30 FPS so that it's not drawing so much power from that other thing that you're focusing on at that moment. Then here's restart shaders optimization. If you're having issues with stuttering or lag or something like that, don't worry about it. Uh, you just come down here, restart shaders optimization. I've tried it actually a couple times since I started hopping on the beta and it is extremely useful just like it was in previous Call of Duty games. Just here, click on it. Might take a minute, might see some lagginess, but it'll be fine. It, it typically cleans it right up. Display gamma, unless you're on a TV, I just leave it on 2.2, honestly, for most of you, it's just 2.2. Like 99% of you, just leave it on 2.2. Uh, brightness, I have mine at 55, just above average. It gives me enough clarity to be able to see enemies so I can get those G Fuel snorting crackheads or the campy mom, where's your credit card kids. It gives me enough visibility to see all of them uh, without going into full grayscale like you do at like 99. Weird thing with the Infinity Ward engine. Don't know why that is, but overall, looks great at 55. Focused mode, this will basically be if you have an ultra wide monitor or you have a second monitor and you don't want to use the full breadth of screen that you have, the full amount of screen that you have. This will use some power to turn off the other one essentially, it'll black screen it. I don't really think it's worth using, so I turn it off because it's just not worth the power draw to do such a thing, but if you wanted to, you could turn that on. I don't see it as worth it. Same with high dynamic range. I have the ability on my monitor I don't see it as worth the power draw to do so. Just doesn't doesn't seem worth it at all. Now here on graphics quality presets. Now this will come in, the first time you come in, it'll say recommended instead of reset to recommend. You'll have these different ones. It'll show oh, these are recommended settings. You can use the recommended settings if you want to, or you can use my way better settings. So first of all, there's render resolution. So this will really affect the resolution of the game. So previously we set the resolution of the screen, how it's going to render on the screen, like 1440p for menus and all that. But if you want to change how the actual game renders when you're on the map, the resolution of that, you can lower it. So if you like to have a nice crisp picture, full 1440p, full 4K, whatever your monitor is, but when you're in the game, you wanna play lower at about 1080p, crank out some extra frames, you can absolutely do that. I set mine to 1440 just because I feel fine when I run at that, it seems to run pretty well, so I leave it at that. If you wanted to go up, you can go up. I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, <laughs> but you can put it at pretty much whatever you want. I would say if you do feel like you have a little bit of a limited setup, to lower it, uh, but you don't have to. You can just leave it at 100 to get the visual quality that you want. You may lose a little bit of performance, as you can see over here. It is pretty high on VRAM and pretty high on the GPU, but again, it's up to you and what kind of setup you have as to what you want to run the game at. So down here below, you'll notice I have NVIDIA DLSS and NVIDIA Image Scaling turned off as well as AMD FSR1. All these are turned off, even though I have an NVIDIA card. Gee, Jaws, why on earth would you do such a thing? NVIDIA DL DLSS is so good for getting extra frames. That's awesome. And you might be right, and I don't care. I turn it off because I can go down here to Fidelity FX CAS or Fidelity FX CAS, turn this on, it has absolutely no power draw. If it does, it's very minimal. And I can crank this bad boy up to 100, and it gives you a beautiful picture while being able to help with boosting performance, which is awesome. Essentially, the way this works is it helps to sharpen the image by, it'll, it'll sharpen dull pixels, but it will dull sharp pixels. So it gives you a much more consistent image. So it does kind of do a dynamic resolution kind of thing. It's really weird to explain, but just trust me that it will make the game look better and it will also run a bit 
better with this turned on as opposed to wrong the power of DLSS. NVIDIA image scaling, I really just don't like in general. I'd prefer the NVIDIA uh, control panel sharpening setting. Personally, I don't even use that one. I think it looks fine on its own. It made Warzone on my monitor look super weird for some reason, but yeah, I'd turn these other ones off. Unfortunately, with the anti-aliasing, uh, we can only do SMA T2X or Filmic SMA T2X. Either one you choose, it really does not matter. It's, it's not gonna make a huge difference in terms of your performance. Wish we could turn it off, but unfortunately we can't. Nearby level of detail, I have this on high. Doesn't make hardly any difference in terms of the amount of power draw. So I leave it on high. It also helps with visibility and being able to see enemies. Texture resolution I have on normal. Most of you will probably be able to run it on normal. If you do have limited RAM or you have a limited graphics card or something like that, I would say run it on low. Very low would probably be an extreme case, but it is something to consider if you do have an older setup. I leave it on normal. Again, it runs pretty well for me on normal. Texture filter antistropic. I put this on high because it has no effect on uh, performance, particle quality, funnily enough, putting this on high in Warzone makes performance better. I don't know why, I'm not a game dev, so I can't tell you, but uh, I've yet to discover if that actually is the case again here, but I put it on high and uh, it, it seems to work perfectly fine. Bullet impacts and sprays, I turn this on just because it'd be really weird to shoot a wall and nothing shows up, and it has little to no effect on performance. Shader quality, I have this bad boy on low just because I don't want to deal with that finicky thing on high and it just it, there's no need to really have it higher than low it, it works fine and if you want to optimize your shaders again you can come in here like shader optimization it'll go through its little thing again and you'll be good to go tessellation turn this off on demand texture streaming it will literally be a sin uh, to turn that on it is completely pointless you're just streaming extra textures the game looks fantastic anyway just literally not worth it at all you're just gonna be streaming textures is that weird yes especially if you have like an internet cap i would definitely turn this off if you don't care you're just like whatever or turn it on but it's not worth the bandwidth it's not worth the performance hit it's uh it's it's not it's not great streaming quality low even though we're not streaming anything put it on low Shadow map resolution, I have this on very low because I do not care about shadows. They look fine at very low. If you wanted them really on extra, you can, but it just adds so much to the performance hit. It's it's just shadows, not worth it, not worth it. Spot shadow quality, I also have this on low. Again, shadows are not insanely necessary or needed for performance, and yet they do draw a lot of power to actually be rendered super weird so keep all the shadows on low now something that is cool is cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows essentially what this does is it stores the shadows you've already seen so say something that's static such as a building on a map casting a shadow if you come across that it'll just bring back the same one it doesn't have to regenerate a whole new shadow for something that you've already come across and is static on the map i recommend leaving these these on it does draw some from the GPU and from your VRAM, but I think it's just worth it because I haven't noticed a serious performance hit by having it on. So if you have a decent setup, I say leave it on. Particle lighting, leave this on normal just because it looks good. I, I also think that there is something to say as far as the visibility goes. There is a lot of muzzle haze, I guess you can call it. A lot of muzzle particles when firing your weapon in this game. I think having finer particles there as opposed to more pixelated ones can slightly clear that up. Regardless, I think it's just way overdone anyway. It's not even realistic. And I would like them to just clean that part of the gunplay up. Really one of the major things ruining it right now. But overall, I think having it on normal is good for that reason without taking too much power away and affecting the performance too much. Ambient occlusion, pointless, turn it off. Unless you want ultra hyper immersion, not worth it. SSR, same thing, don't care about reflections. Not, I, I don't care. So turn that off. NVIDIA reflex low latency. Now this is something that is important and worth going over. Uh, so if you're GPU bound, or if you have a pretty even GPU and CPU. Essentially, so GPU bound means that your GPU is weaker than your CPU. So you can only run the game as far as your GPU will take you. You will want to put this on on. My GPU and my CPU are pretty even, so I put it on just on. Now, if you're CPU bound, 
and again that means your your cpu is significantly weaker just weaker than what your gpu is. say you have a new 3070 3080 3090 whatever it is uh, but your cpu is like an i5 something that's ancient i don't know something that's just worse and not as up to date as your gpu then you'll want to do on plus boost so this will draw some power from your gpu to help prop up your cpu personally i would consider myself uh, it's pretty even i would say i'm a little bit more gpu bound i put it on on and i've noticed a lot better performance because of that initially i ran in and did on plus boost and i was having pretty significant lags and pretty significant stuttering but i switched it to on and i haven't had any issues since so i would definitely take a minute to look at that make sure you're putting this together correctly down here depth of field motion blur weapon motion blur these are all blur things that just make it harder to see crap and if uh crackhead timmy is running around with his g fuel or if camper timmy is sitting in the corner you don't want them blurred out you want to blast them into the next server turn that off same with film grain this ain't a movie this is uh this is call of duty so we don't need film grain turn that off too Lastly, this is like visual aiming settings. I have already gone over all these if you just wanna copy this down and follow yours truly into the unknown, you can. Uh, if you wanna see my full breakdown of them, I will have that other video linked below or it'll be like a, a card somewhere, I don't know. The two things that weren't in the other video that I didn't go over that are actually here now is the first person camera movement and the third person camera movement. This is camera shake and by default it's at 100. And this game is miserable when it's at 100. If a grenade goes off, you just, you can't even see, your eyes are just falling out of your face. It's really le legitimately that bad. Like it paralyzes you, it's so freaking bad. Turn it down to 50, it's much more tolerable at that area, unless you want a hyper cinematic, full PTSD experience, then put it at 100. It's just not worth it. 50 is perfectly fine. It'll help with visibility, being able to see things that are going on and you're not gonna end up getting killed because someone's grenade went off 10, 20 feet away and it's shaking your screen. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's not worth it. That's one thing I definitely recommend changing. Anyway, that is my graphic settings for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta. Let me know down below if these helped you at all. Let me know if you're getting better performance out of these. Also, let me know how you're enjoying the beta. Do you like it? Hate Modern Warfare 2. I don't know, it's been pretty mixed opinions so far. Let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video.